Alrighty guys, I'm Morthodon, and we are back for Shield Hero Episode 4. Yes, 4. Uh, real quick, as an update, if you guys see any weird cuts in this video, or like, possibly if you're full length seeing a resync going on, it's because uh, we actually have no power right now, but we do have a generator because I kind of live out in the woods, so this happens a lot. So we have a generator. I decided that I would go and turn it on because I wanted to record this video, so it should be good. Our generator is usually pretty good. There just might be some light fluctuations like what just happened, like you saw. And stuff like that you might hear the generator in the background because it's like right on the other side of my wall but just so you guys know that I guess if for whatever reason it decides to turn off then it'll cut off my recording and hopefully nothing breaks but yeah so let's just uh, talk about last episode real quick and then get into the episode so that way I can get the if I can get the recording portion done at least on the generator then we're good I can I can uh, edit it, even if it crashes, it auto-saves, yada yada. Uh, so, yeah, so last episode we had the second wave, but the first wave technically for our heroes to experience. Uh, and my big hope for this episode is that we have the... Uh, we, we heard that the other heroes are going to the castle to get rewarded, and I don't think... I don't know if the shield hero is going to be going, now for me is going to be going, but what I really hope is that we have the some of the guards maybe, some people, at least someone like whispering in the corner about like how the shield hero saved a town and like the other heroes hearing it, you know? I think that would be really cool to like see the reactions whether they're like pissed or like, "Oh, he actually did that?" or you know, stuff like that, but without further ado, before I lose power again, let's, uh, before the generator dies, let's jump into this episode, shall we? Alrighty, and so for you full-lengthers, we are going to start the episode in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Alright. Please no power go out age. <laughs> Alright, is now for me there? He's off in the corner, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Talking it up to the women. Hmm. Man, he's really obsessed with uh, Naofumi's. Ooh, what is she saying? She's up to something again, damn it. This isn't what I want to happen! <laughs> 21, 24, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Challenge to a duel? I've seen that in other shows. Yeah. What did she whisper in his ear? Oh god. I think that, I think her whispering that in his ear like that, and then him reacting like that, 
kind of gives more benefit to the blonde guy. I don't have my name list up right now, but the the spear one not knowing anything about what's going on. Hmm. Maybe it's because it's been a week since I watched the show and I've only seen it a couple times now. Uh, I actually really like the, uh, the song. I think the first time I was so focused on the opening, like the visuals, I didn't listen to the song. The second time I was still kind of paying attention to the visuals and stuff, but... I like the song. Oh, that's what she whispered in her ear. <laughs> hmm. He can't even fight back, so... <laughs> or he could just refuse and keep things as they are. He literally gets nothing if he fights them. Oh, Jesus. God damn that chick. Jeez. The king is worse than anybody! <laughs> The sparkle in the shield. This is going to be interesting because he has no offense, so what is he going to do? Yeah. The Pope has like a, he looks like he could be a nice guy, but that also could be a very evil smile. <laughs> That's true. I actually wondered about that, if like, he just won't be able to do any damage in Alpha Me. Since midnight. Okay, I'm recording. Ooh. 
Oh, okay, he took some damage. Oh, I didn't see his health bar. I couldn't tell which one it was. It was too many. <laughs> I think it was the top middle one. I don't think it went down very much. I think that's why he was angry. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> how did he... <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ooh, what the heck? <laughs> nice. <laughs> he has no offense! What do you guys want him to do? Jeez. <laughs> God. Oh, jeez. Is that it? Oh, only because you cheated. All right. What? <laughs> They're all gonna ignore it. Jesus. My God. Mm, it keeps showing the little dot on her on his shield. Okay, yep. I kind of thought that's what it was when we saw that she was in the, like, the top of the castle looking down in the first episode. So what do they have against the shield hero? Jeez. Ooh. 
as they have her, like, tied up and everything. What is that smoke? So, if they free her from the curse, can she still just choose to go back with them? I can't read Japanese lips! <laughs> no! He threw a shield. Did it just come back? Okay. It's also like all shaded around him. I don't know what all this is. Jeez, what the heck? Curse series. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Raftalia. God. And she's free of her curse now, too, right? So this is all what she can say. Uh-oh. Oh, well, the other heroes are showing up. Oh, nice! They're, they're getting into it now. <laughs> Ooh, what's the Pope gonna say? Or do? Getting whispered in his ear. Do you not listen? Yeah, he's just projecting his feelings now.
So he must not have listened to anything that she just said. Yeah. The scratches or the lines on his face. So is this inside his head, or is this really happening? I'm kind of confused at, like, how that's supposed to be, like, represented, I guess. <laughs> is his curse stuff gonna rescind, maybe? Yeah, it's fading. Oh, Natalia. Best girl. Hmm. Oh. So she does look older. I, I thought she looked older again, but I didn't want to say it because I thought it was always crazy. Hmm. Interesting music going on. Okay, so they did hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. So is there not going to be an ending? Is this the ending right here? So is she just older now? I gotta talk about that later.
Ah, okay. Interesting. Nice. Oh, it is the birds. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> All right. That is the end of episode four. That was pretty good. Uh, or that was really good. I really liked it. Uh, so... the I guess it kind of answered my question that I was going to talk about. One of the biggest things I wanted to talk about was... So last episode... There were a couple things while editing that I forgot to mention uh, in the discussion. Uh, one of them was where the shopkeep, the the blacksmith guy that sells them the armor, he didn't, or he was gonna say something. He's like, "Do you not know about demi humans?" Like he knew something regarding them when she said, "Like you're you're looking grown up" or whatever he said to her, and. And then now, and now Fumi, like, acted surprised or something. And, uh, I never got to talk about that in the discussion. But he was probably going to mention something about this or, you know, something like that. So, I guess that, hmm. Interesting. So, as they level up, they get older? Does that have a stopping point? I wonder how that works. Like... Now that she's, I, like, I don't know if this world has a maximum level or whatnot, or how that works, but if she's 20, level 24, I think she is, he's 21, and she's this, she's gotten this much bigger, you know? Does that mean that by the time she's, like, level 80, she's gonna be, like, an old lady? <laughs> that, that's gonna be kind of, like, awkward. Like, how would she fight, you know? Or is it, like, you reach a certain point... And you start to age normally, like, by level 30, you're a fully grown demi-human, and then from there you age on or something. I don't know. There's still some stuff about that I don't quite understand, but uh, I guess that I was going to talk about that when she looked bigger all of a sudden, and... Uh, I also, when they say they level up, does it actually mean level up? Like, when she's in a party and it says she's level 24, is it based off that number? Or is it by, like, feats, you know? Because right here, she didn't get any XP and didn't level up, so why did she suddenly get older, right? It's almost like it's like an emotional connection was made or something that made her, you know, grow. So I wonder if it is, like, has nothing to do with their actual level, like, but more what they, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Kind of like if you guys ever seen uh, Dan Maki, that anime, where in order to level up you have to accomplish, like, a great feat, uh, that kind of thing it might be, and just, like, this connection that she has with someone regardless of slave contract or not and stuff like that, would be, you know, considered a great feat that made her grow a bit. And maybe the reason why I thought she looked older after the second episode was, like, in the last episode, the third I thought she looked older than the second episode. Maybe that was because she was overcoming her past trauma, and that was another feat she did, so she grew a little bit, you know? Maybe it's something to do with that. I'm not sure, but that's interesting. And then the other thing from last episode that I forgot to talk about was the fact that the slave trader said... So I believe he said something like, so it really came true... You actually chose her. 
Which makes me think there's some kind of prophecy. And I wonder if maybe the king knows about it. Maybe there's like something like the shield hero always goes like down this path, you know? And maybe the shield hero always becomes like maybe evil or something or close to evil. And that's why everyone shuns him because the king knows this. So the king tells everybody to shun him, you know, had his daughter manipulate everything and, uh, and kind of, you know, make it so everyone hates the shield hero and hopefully he can't progress and become a problem. I'm not sure if that's what's happening or if it's like, if it's just something completely different, maybe the king has no idea about it because... The reason why I mentioned the whole evil thing is we saw the curse thing this episode. Which seems to be when he's, like, in his utmost despair, it's this, like, energy that releases that seems ominous, you know? Obviously, you could argue that we haven't seen it do anything bad yet, so you can't, like, say it's bad. But usually things born out of despair and hatred that manifest themselves in a world like this is not a good thing. So, and also just the representation of, like, the red lines on its face, you know. So I wonder if it's just, like, at, like, extreme heightened emotions, this is something that releases. I wonder, like, what it's gonna do for him. Like, will it make him stronger i don't know but but yeah so we got confirmation i don't think i really mentioned this in my discussions aside from the fact that i i did mention seeing her in the tower and not sure what that meant maybe i did say something about royalty but i did have a feeling in the back of my mind that maybe she had like some kind of royalty in her because we saw her at the top of the castle in like a dress or something at first so Apparently she's the king's daughter, and he's fine with her going off adventuring, I guess, even though it's dangerous, um, and just helps manipulate whatever she wants to do. Now, like I said, I don't know if it has to do with some kind of prophecy, like the slave trader kind of like foreshadowed that the king is a part of. Or if all of this is just something completely different and for some reason the princess just likes to toy with people because she's the king's daughter and she's power hungry and she can, you know? I feel like there's gotta be, like, something more against the shield hero than what meets the eyes. Like, I, I, I feel like there's gotta be something, right? I don't know. I, I kind of hope there is a reason that they're targeting the shield hero specifically, because it's not even that... If she just liked to mess with people, right? I feel like she would have messed with some of the other heroes, and we would have seen it more, you know? But she literally just targets Naofumi for whatever reason. So I really hope there is a reason rather than just making our main character an underdog so that way we can feel that much more special when he rises above it, you know? Um, but I'm sure that's all information we'll find later down the road. The fight was really cool. I like how it's interesting because I don't think he was able to lower the spear guys. Well, I guess I can actually open up the, the names now that I have... <laughs> Stuff closed. Uh, so Kitamura, Motoyasu is what they mainly call him, I think. Uh, he didn't seem to take damage from the hits, but it seems like he felt damage from the hits, which is interesting. So he was able to, you know, bash his little, you know, green energy shield thing into him. And he, you know, seems like he coughed up some, you know, spit, like he lost air, you know, like the classic sign of that. And so, and then he, he talked about, like, 
aiming for his, you know, crotch and face. You know, things, obviously, if he feels pain, even if it doesn't do damage, the crotch would hurt. <laughs> and the face is, you know, what he, obviously, he seems like he thinks highly of himself. So, he obviously, like, seems like a pretty boy kind of thing. So, obviously, that's something that he doesn't want, like, messed up. Uh, but... It's interesting. I really like how Raftalia did her whole speech thing after she was free to the slave pack thing. And then I also like how the other heroes came in, and even though they didn't say anything at first, which is kind of scumbag, right? Uh, they They did end up saying something, which is cool. I appreciate that. So I wonder... I wonder if they're completely on Naofumi's side, or if they're just starting to believe it, you know? Like, do they... Oh, there goes my generator fluctuating again. <laughs> uh, so, like, is their hatred for Naofumi completely subsided? Like, obviously we know Motoyasu's isn't quite there yet. He he still seems to be doubting it a bit because he doesn't want to admit that he's wrong or, you know, whatnot. But I wonder if they're completely done with with accusing him of stuff. Or do they still think he assaulted the princess? And do they, you know, just think that after that he learned a lesson and was nice now? Or do they think that the whole thing was a ploy after seeing what the the princess did? I don't know. But... Either way, it's one step forward, not in the way I hoped. I kind of hoped that, you know, they'd be at this party and where they had they had people whispering, it was just about the wrong thing. I wish that it was them whispering about the shield hero saving, you know, one of the villages and stuff like that. You know, maybe instead of that guard, like, talking himself up, he was talking about how the shield hero helped them to save a town and stuff like that. And the other heroes heard it and were like... Or like, would he really do something like that? I thought he was a scumbag, you know? And stuff like that. And I had hoped that they wouldn't be talking about the other heroes as much. And that would have, like, you know, made them think things through. Because all they did was go and take out the boss. Or at least that's all we saw them do. I'm sure they took out some other stuff, too. But, uh... They didn't, they weren't, like, it seemed like they were just in the woods, like, fighting it without too many people around, except for a couple guards. So, it just, I don't know, it made me think that maybe there would be something there that would happen. But instead, you know, the, the princess tried to mess with Naofumi, again, whispering into his ear. And I also, I said this during the episode, that the, uh, what's it called? That... Motoyasu, with her whispering in his ear like that, it seems more plausible that he had nothing to do with the first incident. Because I was always suspicious, like, maybe Motoyasu helped set that all up because he did get Naofumi's armor and stuff like that, and they did benefit by getting his money. Granted, that was the princess that took it, so I don't know if she gave any of that to him uh, or whatnot, but either way... I always wondered if he had a hand in that. I'm still not completely taking him off the board with suspicion, but I'm leaning more and more towards that he had no idea, and this is just the princess being, you know, manipulative because she can or whatever, you know. She's just a horrible person, but... That was some good stuff. I really, I really like this episode. Sorry about the start of the fight. I don't know if you guys noticed or if I kept it in during the edit. You probably noticed it in the full length. I got a little interrupted. I was asked, uh, I was asked when the power went out and, and all that. So I, uh, I might end up cutting that out of the normal YouTube reaction, but full length that'll still be in. So yeah, I, I probably, I only missed the very, very start of the fight, maybe a couple clashes. And I know I missed a couple text lines. I'll see it again when I'm editing. So if I missed anything important. I'll see it while editing. Hopefully I didn't, though. I guess I could also try to go back and see real fast now. 
since I don't have much more to say, the whole episode was kind of like taking place at this party, this fight, the curse stuff, which I talked about, the fight stuff, which I talked about. Fight me fair and square. No, I saw that stuff. Yeah, so he entered the arena. Okay, they mentioned the Pope. I remember seeing that. She was saying best of luck. When did I look away? Was it right here? Remember that folk tale about the... Okay, yeah, no, I already heard that. Irresistible spear. Or, not irresistible. Be a man and admit defeat. He pulls out his shield and does that stuff. Yeah, this initial thrust I think I missed. You stopped it. I guess you're not the shield hero for nothing. Okay. You lose. You lost the moment you couldn't pierce my shield. Okay. I don't think I've read that part. Yeah, and then Chaos Spear was where I looked back. Okay. So I didn't really miss too much important. Just basically them talking crap to each other. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, it was a very good episode. I very much enjoyed it. It went by very quickly uh, and stuff like that. So... I really look forward to what happens next. Maybe we'll start slowly moving away from the now for me is a scumbag and more getting into this world a bit more and like leveling up and getting ready for the next wave and stuff like that. Maybe he'll actually be able to fight with the group next time because I know they couldn't party together. I talked about this in the last episode. I still don't have more answers to that, uh, but they were able to group together they were able to get together near each other and fight the same boss, but the, they weren't able to party with each other, which I think is how the system works. So hopefully now for me can maybe be there to help next time or whatnot. Hopefully, you know, I don't know. The princess didn't seem too defeated here. I feel like the princess is going to try more crap, but I really hope she doesn't. I don't know. Um, I feel like that's going to get a bit redundant if that's how this whole season goes. Is just the princess trying to mess with now for me and it either working or it doesn't, you know, and uh, and ruining his reputation and stuff. But anyways, we'll we'll see how that goes down the road. I'll try not to speculate too much on that. But but yeah, guys, I guess that is it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can hit that subscribe button. You can also go into the description for the Patreon link where you can support the channel there as well. And you get access to things like early access and full length and stuff like that if you're interested. And yeah, all that good stuff. So thank you for watching. And before my generator dies and I lose this recording, I'm going to end it here. Bye, guys. See you next time.